Good morning, folks. Lester here. Um, I hope you like my new getup. I got this for Christmas. We had an early Christmas. Uh, we opened the gifts last night, actually. I had all the, uh, both of my boys, Ellie with his fiance, Megan, along with Jamie had Xander and his girlfriend, Kendra, along with Lex. So we did an early Morrow family, my family Morrow, Christmas. And I got some camouflaged uh, suspender overalls that are very warm. My lower body. The crazy thing is, is my upper body gets cold and my lower body almost never does. So this is kind of opposite of what I would probably need, but hey, it's all good. I haven't worn suspenders in a long time, so it feels kind of funny. They kind of like kind of crawl up places. The suspenders probably should be loosened a little bit, but uh, nonetheless, I am headed to Tractor Supply in Livingston to get hay. We have some really cold weather coming. I mean, like bitterly cold weather coming. And when I say bitterly cold, uh, I know I'm talking Texas bitterly cold, but enough so where I'm gonna have to buy some hay for bedding. So you guys come along with me. Let's drive up to Tractor Supply. Let's get some hay. And we're gonna have some fun putting this stuff around. So it's gonna be a big day, an important day and we're trying to plan ahead because if we wait too long, I can promise you all the things that people buy up during these cold weather, these snaps of cold weather are going to be gone. So y'all come with me today. I called for a loadout. That means they have someone come out and help you. But my problem is sometimes they'll send out young ladies and guys, I'm not going to be able to allow a young lady to sit here and do this kind of work for me. It is a guy. I'm lucky because if it had been a girl, I would have felt bad about having to have her do my job for me. I'm watching his hand. He says, stop there. Okay. Woo. This fella here, I, ha I have to laugh. He was saying that he's been here for two years, huh? Yeah. A year and a half, and this is the best hay they've ever had in this whole year and a half. And I says, what's unfortunate about that is that this is all gonna be used for bedding for our pigs and our goats, because we, you know, we feed round hay. <laughs> and so how crazy is that, that we finally get to find some really good hay, and gosh darn it, it's uh, gonna be laid in, that means peed in, pooped in, but it will keep them warm for this cold spell we're gonna get. You don't know how blessed I am for that. That was a guy, I gave him a tip. I gave him a good tip for helping me. But I told him, I says, man, I got a bad shoulder. I'm trying not to work it. I've been told not to work it. But it's still, no matter what you say to me or what you say in the comments, I don't know if, if you're a woman, I don't think you get it for a man to sit in the truck or to stand there and watch a woman. I, this is not gonna come out right and y'all are not gonna forgive me for saying this. Howdy. But uh, I am so sorry, but I just, something in my conscience will not allow me to sit there and watch a woman load something heavy without me trying to help. And so I don't mind a, a man doing it because this is a good sized man. He works at Trench Supply. That means he knows that he has to be able to do certain things. And so that may be a little chauvinistic. A lot of y'all may see that as misogynistic or chauvinistic. I don't know exactly what you would call it. But to me, it's just pride. It's just maybe a selfish pride, but, it, but it maybe it is just pride. Lester, you know that pride cometh before the fall, don't you? Guys, it's because I want to, it's, it's not a bad thing. This kind of pride's not a bad thing. It just wants to be, you know, a guy who can, I don't want to see a woman do my job. I don't want to see a woman have to sit there and struggle and have to do a job while I just sit and watch. I'll put it that way. You know what that reminds me of? Jamie says I'm the first man that she's ever been with who likes to drive. She says every other, her husband, her, her ex-husband, 
and her other relationships, long relationships that she's had in her life, the men have always preferred to sit in that drop passenger seat and kick back and either play on their phones or just, just look around. And she did all the driving. And I don't understand that. I should probably just shut up now, shouldn't I? I, I just don't get that, y'all. I don't get that. I'm like, I, I'll be happy to let... It's not because I don't like the way she drives. She Jamie drives great. But it's just that I feel like opening, <laughs> opening a door. I'm that kind of guy. I'm still that kind of guy. With those are those are my roots, and so I may be a dinosaur. I may be a dying breed, and to a lot of people in different movements of today, they can't wait to have this generation die off fast enough. But I'll tell you what. I'm just glad there was a guy there to load the hay. Because if it had been a woman, I would have gotten out and climbed up and done all of that. And I'd probably say, oh, gosh, darn it. Anyway. Don't hate me. Ladies, don't hate me, please. I don't think this is a good sign. I'm just getting here to the property and I see that Dixie is lying down again. Hi, Beverly. Dixie feeling okay? says no. Beverly says Dixie's not feeling well today. Guys, I don't know what else we can do. Hi, babies. Everyone okay? Hi, sweetie. Baby, why are you laying down? So she might just be laying down to get off of her feet. She might just be lying down to get off her feet. I, I know I repeated that, but I'm just thinking out loud. She pooped again inside of her stall. And so you guys know what we talked about. This is not normal. Normally, if a horse or a donkey have a way in and out of their stall, sweetie, can I have a love that? Can I love on you for a little bit? Are you okay? I think it's very abnormal for a horse or a donkey to poop inside the stall because they don't normally like that. They are very arrogant. Um, and they, they, you know, they have a, they have a, they just hold themselves to a higher standard than, than lots of other animals. And so a horse, when they have access to be able to come walk in and out, I wanted to see what was gonna happen here. When they have a way to walk in and out, Beverly, I don't think that she wants you on top of her. She's trying to headbutt you to move out of the way. Uh, let me get back over here and kind of talk to you for a minute. So when a horse uses the restroom inside their own stall, 
um, they will not, a horse will not walk over the top of it. They will not walk in their own poop. So what she's done here is in essence, cut this entire part of her stall. Now it's off access to her. And so if she was to have pooped a second time or a third time, and this happens a whole lot when people leave their horses in stalls for too long, then that stall becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And then the problem is they um, begin to get a very low self-esteem and you don't, you know, horses, horses, like I said, they, they have a, they have a very high self-esteem horses in general and horse people in general. I hate to say it, but I said it before. They carry themselves a little bit differently than other folks. And, um, boy, I tell you what, guys, I'm just not real sure about this. I'm not real sure about this. Beverly, what can we do, baby? I wish I could read her mind. I wish I could read her mind, y'all. I'm just trying to watch her behavior and see what's going on with her. Her eyes just look tired. She looks tired. Beverly, sweetie. I know you want to be close to her. I know she likes having you close to her. I'm going to stand on the back side of her so Beverly will not... Maybe she doesn't mind me being over here. Sweetie, I think you should have to get up. So we, we know that the colicky stuff was is over, or at least we thought it was. We've had a vet come out and all of that. But uh, we knew that the only issues was the thrush. And we've been treating that and cleaning that and uh, giving her painkillers. But I'll tell you what, I don't like the fact that she's laying down facing the corner Mm. All right, I just uh, made her get up. I made her, guys. I hate to say it, but I just made her get up because I know that if it is a colicky stomach, they have to get up on their feet. And then as soon as she got up, she did poop. But once again, she's staying right here. And now look at her mouth, what she's doing. What are you doing with your mouth, baby? Sweetie, what are you doing with your mouth? Are you okay? I don't think that's a yawn. I don't think horses yawn and her tongue. I remember that I was reading in a comment something about the tongue. Whenever the vet was here, she checked her teeth and her, and her teeth are fine. So we're not concerned about a tooth infection. But when she does stuff like that, it's very alarming and concerning. And I don't really know. I don't know, but I do know she pooped again in her stall without coming out of her stall. Her eyes just look exhausted. She looks tired to me, very tired. And um, in case you're wondering where Jamie's at, and Lester screaming and hollering, how come Jamie's not there? Jamie had to take her son to the airport. I don't get this at all. Beverly, do you really have to do that right now? Um, I will say, and I think that you would agree that she just looks exhausted. I, I'll get Jamie over here as soon as I can. But um, oh, I feel sorry for her. I just don't get it. We've done everything we've been told to do. Is that a sign of pain possibly? Could that be a sign of pain? I'm going to get on my phone and look it up and see if that could be a sign of pain. Maybe I'll message Rick. All right, so I just got off the phone with Rick. He said, you have to get her to walk. He said that her using the restroom in the stall is only probably because she is finding walking to be discomforting. And so he wasn't so concerned about that, but he says, get her up. And if you have to put a halter and a lead on her, make her walk, make her get up and get going. Uh, he, would, he wanted to talk a little bit about how much water she has drunk. And so I said, I feel, what I did, I filled this up last night before I left. And so I says, Rich, you only drink about a quarter of that, but that's with her and the donkey. And he said, that's not enough water. So he suggested I go ahead and give her uh, 
something to supplement that. He actually said you could probably put a little bit of salt uh, on a carrot or an apple. He says that something that she would eat and that might make her thirsty enough to start drinking more because we don't want to get her dehydrated. I had to do a little skin test. Uh, I felt her skin, the el elasticity of her skin. And uh, we talked about that. Rick walked me through a lot of stuff, but mainly he wants her to be up. He just wants her up. And uh, the skin is actually bouncing back. It's not just laying there, it's bouncing back. So that's a good sign, I think he said. But um, I just don't know, you guys. I mean, Rick was real blunt and he says, hey, your horse is either gonna get better or she's not. And you know, I love the way Rick lays it out there and tells you the way it is. And that's true, she's either gonna get better or she's not. We've done everything the vets told us to do baby all right we're gonna figure this out rick said make her walk make her so what i've done is open the gate i'm guys i'm gonna make her walk make her and so the only way to make her walk is to make beverly walk and if beverly walks then she'll walk And so that's gonna be step one. Uh, the downfall to this is they may end up trying to, hey, settle down. Get over there and eat on Jamie's garden and stuff. When, you know what, fine, let them eat on Jamie's garden. Um, I just don't know, man, I just don't know. Okay, friends, winter is upon us. Winter is upon us. I need the goats to have their barn back their shelter back before the cold winds and rains get here later this week i also have to have a place for dixie and beverly to go so what i'm going to do is move carl and debbie into that pasture that gives them a loafing shed their own water and carl's nest as of right now carl can go in any pasture he wants because the gate over there is down i'm going to take my tractor into the pasture Hopefully using my tractor and this roll of hay to block that gate while I reinstall it. I have my tools right here. This is gonna be risky, it's dangerous, I'm here alone. So y'all say your prayers and let's, you know what, just come along with me. Y'all just come along with me. So far so good, Carl's still eating. He has no idea what's going on. Carl has no idea what's happening here. Let's hope we can keep it that way. coming this way I am not ready yet I am not ready yet I don't know what he'll do when he gets over here I'll use a tractor to jump on if I have to I hope he'll just walk away and let me work I can't take my eyes off of Carl though there he comes he needs to go back to eating I left the tractor running, hoping it would deter him from coming over here. I have to get this down and put onto there. I need Wanda to go in there with Carl. Go, Wanda. Turn. Turn, turn right there. Go by the tractor. It's okay, love. Come on. Go. The... Go. All right, we're good with those two. Let's try to back ourselves out of here. We're gonna back ourselves right out of here. nothing to it carl does not like the fact that i pulled one over on him he's very upset with me 
Yes, I pulled one over on him. I'm... He spit in my mouth, Carl. Ugh. He spit in my mouth. I didn't swallow it. I spit it back out. But it was something with substance because I could... It had texture to it. That's probably too much information. Ah, gross. I end up dying from the bird flu or something. Y'all remember this date and what happened on this date. And never get that close to an ostrich. Not one that spits. Let's see what I should hope these gates hold. I'm gonna fill up your water, Carl. I'm filling up your water. Carl, you're stepping in your water bucket. Carl. Guys, he literally is stepping in his water. You're gonna trip and fall and hurt yourself, sir. All right, I'm just gonna walk away from here. I just walk away from here. Don't trip! If he would've knocked that bucket over, I'd've been in bad shape. Now your water's gonna be all dirty, Carl. Carl, you're what? Freaking Zoid! Stop! I need to fill up your water! Guys, I need two hands for this. Carl is very upset that Daddy pulled one over on him. I don't like upsetting my babies. But I had to do some pasture rearrangements. And, uh... I left you with the nest. I left him with his nest. He should be happy. Now I'm filling up his water and I'll leave him alone. All right, I think Carl's calmed down. All the waters are good. Pastures have all been arranged according to plan. Lester's plan. The goats have their pasture back along with their very own wacky pack shack. We're looking pretty good here. Guys, you know what time Come it is. On. Everybody up on your feet, off the couches, off the love seats, sofas, recliners, uh, rocking chairs. Uh, let's dance ourselves out of this video and we'll see y'all next time. Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester.